It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to my Mid-Max series, playing as the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth, the British Empire. Welcome back, guys. Okay, so we've taken back Libya, we've pushed them out of Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somaliland, and um, yeah, we're clearing Vichy France in Syria and Levant, and that's pretty much it. Japan hasn't taken out China yet, we're giving them a little bit of a leg up by giving them a few guns, which is always nice. And we're still training some more divisions as well as. So all's gold as well. So right now we have, um, I guess, the more latter stages of the Battle of Britain. Look at this ratio. Do you see that for a second? 26. If you hover over these, you get an idea of what models they're using. You can see there's quite a few uh, <coughs> quite a few Italian models there. But you can see for the most part, most of our planes are state-of-the-art. You've got, all right, you've got a few Gloucester Gladiators, which is shit. But the Hurricanes, the Spitfires, and the Spitefuls are super strong. And right now, I don't think any of them are following their missions. No, I'm getting all shot down. Which is very good. So have a little hover over the missions. The Battle of Biscay. Biscay? Whereabouts that? Oh, it's here. Alright, we lost a convoy. And, ah, oh, it was some... Uh, subs so that's the reason why we've got this fleet guys the fleet here this escort fleet that runs from here to here is the sole purpose of it is to defend the convoys you can see some of the just uh, the capital ships have got hit but for the most part this guy is doing his job because he's defending my convoys against oh here we go there's a we got the fleet here Ooh, okay that's actually it's actually a bit of a concern that okay um so the german fleet has decided to rear its ugly head and at this point, we can intercept it. We can have a always retreating by the looks of things. Yeah. Then we'll put it on patrol. Patrol is a better option because we can detect them quicker. And because we have an overall larger fleet, we can end up doing a lot more damage. So right now, we have got air superiority. We've got the French fleet. Well, we had the French fleet. They've just backed out. And the British fleet have arrived now. So we could do some decent damage. And we have got mostly air control. There's a lot going on there, to be honest with you. And at the end of the day, this was completely indecisive anyway. Just a little bit of a few scratches here and here and everywhere, but no decisive outcome. Don't want to leave your feet here for too long because there's a lot of uh, air activity. And they will slowly but truly chip away at your big carriers. And I don't want that to happen. 24 enemy ships here, so we want to engage this. I'll put them on patrol because our fleet's bigger. Just a heads up, I've explained this in a quite a few videos, but search and destroy is if you have a relatively small and compact navy and patrol is if you know you outnumber the enemy. Um, I'm not going to explain why, but just for those reasons. So the most part here... We'll be able to engage them, but they're going to try and back away. So it looks like we're going to have to pick them apart from a distance with our naval bombers. What we'll do is grab you guys. Go here and here. And do that. There you go. That's good. Remember, these guys are here as kind of like a filter, like a reserve to... When I get landed on, uh, they can fill the gaps and push them back. That's the whole idea. More than likely, initially, the first landings will be marines or some kind of infantry, so lots of soft attack will initially eject them. When the tanks arrive on the other hands, those divisions aren't really going to help you out. Okay, those guys are up to date now. Infantry is good. Doctrines are fine. You could work a little bit more on uh, search and fleet and being if you wanted to. That's an option for you, but completely optional. We've got a lot of uh, destroyers here with other planes and whatnot. How's the planes going? Carrier fighters. We'll do the fighters got 33 of them. Let's have a look. I need to import some more aluminium and some more oil. Looks like our convoys are getting intercepted. Yep, that's all good. We are getting bombed a little bit here, but the anti is taking care of it. One of the fears could be is you could get dropped on. I usually would leave one troop here on uh, one like stack for air superiority. At this point as well, usually what would happen is the Americans would send you uh, planes as well. But I'm not getting that luxury because obviously I can't communicate that with the uh, 
the uh, USA player. I guess I could request a lend lease or planes. He says no. <laughs> oh, wow. Friend in need, right? Wow. Okay, get rid of all of those. There you go. All right, you guys are done. Can we get all you guys back here? Yeah, we could, and in that case, we can move our navy back. I'm gonna put you guys on escort here. Oh, they're repairing. Um, for the most part, right this very second, I'd prefer you guys to go here. One option that most people like to go for is go for this one, split off. I wouldn't recommend that, because what happens is they end up getting split off, and then they get interceptors, they're retreating. Or they split off, and then your navy's smaller, and then the enemy will choose to intercept it because it's smaller. I really wouldn't recommend that. Might be a good idea to go for two lots, you know, because we are importing a lot of stuff right now. There you go, boom. Whoa, don't go yet. Stay. God damn, they're so enthusiastic, aren't they? I'm gonna go here. And then we will move up here. This is just a tactic, this. When the Allies have controlled North Africa, you can, you can poke Sicily. You can poke Sardinia. It's just to be an absolute frickin' nuisance. We're going to go for Royal Marine Regiment. So we can go for Churchill's. Norway's joined the war. They're declaring war on the Scandinavians. Uh, we can attach you guys here. One... Western Mediterranean Sea. I think that's convoys, isn't it? Yeah, you can see the convoys are moving through here. Which is a bit of a problem, because if they went through Cape of uh, New Hope, they wouldn't have that problem. But that's the reason why we, our supplies are getting hit just a wee bit here. So you are a bit of a concern, so we need to make sure we keep up the production of carrier planes. Otherwise, we can have no carriers. Oh, hitting those Norwegians. Are we not helping them out here? Guess not. We don't care about the Norwegians, guys. V Exposed. We don't care about Norway. So, when you're doing a naval invasion, this is something I feel like I've explained in like, so many videos right now. I guess you, you can feel free to turn off at this point, because I feel like I, I have explained this way so many times. Um, but at this point, what you do is you activate the plan, they go, and then you move your boats into position here and I'll make this bigger and then you guys move here uh, so what we'll get here is air superiority and we'll also get shore bombardment right now with the lots of soft attack we might be able to do some relatively decent damage it's kind of tricky though because it is hills and uh, the amphibious landing is hurting as well then we go we landed when you land, initially you want to push out as soon as possible to try and grab every single province. Otherwise, they will push you back. And remember, if you're in a single tile and they attack into you, you will suffer from an encirclement penalty. Where that penalty is horrendously bad. Honestly, it is horrendous. You don't really want to be experiencing it. It is bad. There you go. We managed to land. You can continue to use your shore bombardment, which I really would recommend you do, because, I don't know, it's one of those things that people don't even know about. Even to this day, we, we find people that are, like, discovering that stat and, like, holy shit, you can actually do that? Yes, you can, Dave. You can use shore bombardment. Bit nervous about being here, though, because you could get intercepted with the Italian Navy. You want to... You want to... You want to eyeball this. I mean, we right now, we know the Italian Navy has been decimated. They have four ships. So, in this situation, you know for certain... For certain... Uh, that you're not going to be running into many enemies. So in this circumstance, we know that it's safe. But still, we still don't have much air superiority in this region, so it is a bit of a problem. Right now, they have uh, looks like they've abandoned their plans to go any further forward. So right now, we're winning. There you go. The Battle of Britain is now over, and uh, they've decided they've lost too much land, so they've given up. There you go. Win-win. Denmark's gone. Sweden lend -lease has disappeared. We're pushing them back here. We've got myself a, uh, a big fat division there too. As you can see, it's reducing their defense here, air superiority and shore bombardment. Get rid of those Vichy France troops. At this point, what you could do is, I don't know, do that. Convoys. 
And then you could cover those two regions as well. Those guys are done now. We can go from here, then land into here. One thing I forgot to do here that I really should have done, I should have clicked on the terrain and checked what the terrain was. When it comes down to an amphibious assault, you want to make sure you've got more advantages than disadvantages. In this case, planes would have been better bet than hills. But there you go, minor mistakes, but you get the idea really. And and if you're playing the opposing side, you can think of ahead and think to yourself, oh, where are they going to land? Well, they're more likely to land on planes, aren't they? And I guess I suppose you can play kind of a poker face game where you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, can I outdo him eh, by landing in a location which I le least likely think he was going to be? I don't know. Play it to your strengths, my dudes. Going to wait for the Churchill. Oh, that's good. I think we'll go for some encryption, decryption. Um, I'm going to go for the tanks, get the Vickers, get those Vickers pumped out. We could go for War Economy as well. That's probably one little minor mistake, but that's okay. It's not too bad. Hungary demands Transylvania. As they do. Sign you guys to here. All the other guys, I'll sign those manually. And these can be our reserves as they filter in as they move forward. One, two, three, four... You guys go here. That's good. And we can do a bit more aluminium. We'll get two... Whoa! That's way too much. Okay. What I was doing then is I was trying to import more than I actually needed. Um, just so I didn't have to keep going back into this menu and checking it every, every day, it feels like. Iberian coast. That's good. Treaty of Cronova. Ah. You might be a good idea too to check what's here, for instance, check how many naval coastal forts they've got. They might predict what you're going to do, so it might just be better to think ahead of time, you know. It's good, and as you can see, they're trying to land on us here. We've got we're getting bombed, some strategic bombers. So in that case, you can assign a few of your air wings. He's a good guy, I'll assign him here. And they'll probably much disturb all of them. They're, they've disappeared. Immediately they disappear. And they assign another one. Some more Northern England. The AI does this. They're a bit of a nuisance. They'll just keep moving around. There you go, like 60%. 60% disturb. 70%, yeah. They ain't dropping any bombs there. It's one of the reasons why I, I don't really think strategic bombers are very good, to be honest with you. I feel like they get disturbed way too easily. Okay, I wouldn't usually upgrade this to the improved artillery, but we have a thousand stockpiled, so why not? Alright, we seem to have lost a lot of convoys. Where are we losing convoys? West of Mediterranean Sea? Yeah, Mediterranean again. Chamberlain Lausanne's. At this point, this would be the Battle of Dunkirk, wouldn't it? But France is falling a lot, 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 lot earlier than they would normally fall. At this point, what you want to do is completely up to you. Um, an op option could go for the transport models to do some amphibious assaults. To be fair, I don't know. It's not. It's up to you what you want to do. I guess the secret weapons is a nice one. Look at those electronics and uh, is a nice boost as well. I suppose you can do that. Air defense, I've gone for that a bit late. Radar is nice. Tizard mission, I think gives you some ships, doesn't it? I'm not sure. And then nuclear technology is another one. Uh, otherwise, you can go for air production, which is 20% reduction in 20% reduction of cost. There you go. I got it out. 70 days for that invasion, which we will do. As you can see, the the amount of planes that we've got on these carriers is very, very, very low. I'm trying to keep the production up here by pumping them out. Also, there is what the McCall it's as well. Where are they? It's these ones, aren't they? Yeah, in this case, you want to disband this because they've all got shot down. Um, is there a way that I can have a look at you? I can't add the air wing on because I ain't got enough planes, so there you go. Um, I guess at this point you guys, oh, you're repairing. 
over capacity. So this is a... Uh, this is way too big. There you are, 60 of you. You can go to here. And that's over capacity as well. Um, there you go. Still a 100% penalty, really. Wow. Wow. There you go. The guns are good. Those are up to date now. That's fine. We can work on the Churchill, which is going to be 100 odd days. Soviet Union has declared war on Finland. At this point, what's a good idea is usually to send uh, a bunch of planes to the Soviets while they're at war with another power. Which is usually a good thing to do. You can only lend lease whilst they're at war. So if they ever go to war with Afghanistan and Iran, which is part of their focus tree, at this point you can just throw guns at them. Because you're just preparing them for their invasion of Barbarossa. Which I've said a few times that the big invasion in the game is Barbarossa. That's what decides most games in Hearts of Iron 4, particularly the historical ones. Alright guys, we can clear out this area now. So let's go. These are extra divisions that were just sat around doing nothing, so we might as well give them something, put guns in their hands. I think what happened is a lot of convoys got shot, got intercepted in one go. It's good, so that area is, for the most part, clear. You guys can be assigned to this guy? No, no, no. This guy. So his army gets assigned with that army. Yeah, there you go. Go. They're on the way. We good to go. One day. Go here. And then... Are they leaving? Not yet. They need control of this sea region, probably. And then they're going, and then you guys can go here to give shore bombardment. And they're landing. Penalty is massive, over like 70-80%. The minute they arrive, split them off. It's good. And then push them back. Move you guys over a wee bit so we can keep the momentum. There you go. Pew, pew, pew. Kick them out of uh, Sicily. Which is just... I guess it's kind of... Um, it kind of is a nuisance for Germany. Because that means they're kind of fighting on multiple fronts now. So it just... It just makes it very difficult for them. At this moment I'm being overwhelmingly ballsy. Because I really shouldn't be going around these big troops here. Stacks here. But why not? So right now, I guess you'd uh, assign a few tank divisions, so you have a little bit more flexibility. Oh, they're, they're actually doing exactly what I thought, well, I didn't think they'd do. There you go, we're holding them in now. Where's the other guys? Are they on their way? Yeah, they are. No, 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 stop. Everyone, everyone go here. Oh, we've just had them encircled. Okay, there we go, we just lost them. So what, what I probably should have done here is I should have backed them out. Because they were in a port too, so they could have left. But they, they got pushed back, so there you go. Which is uh, kudos to the AI, because I wasn't prepared for that. That's actually some really, really good uh, good performance by the AI. By the looks of things, they look like they're going to push us back too. Yeah, they are. Air defense. Radars, next one. No, so in this case, we have completely lost control of this region now. And that was a devastating defeat in Sicily. Okay, so what we can do at this point is go here. I'm going to keep clicking here so they all leave. And they all did leave, that's good. Alright, what we'll do um, is we'll pull out the rest of our other heavy infantry divisions. And move them all here. And I guess what we'll do too is make them even bigger. We'll go for the classic 40 width. The big fat one. In fact, in all fairness, we could probably make it bigger than 40. We could go 44. 
because we are using Montgomery when you arrive exercise they want to send us some guns because we definitely need those now all right now not to focus as much on anything else that's good brilliant a few planes in the Bay of Biscay because we're sending guns to uh, the Soviets that's probably hurting us. Man, we sent all those pretty quickly, didn't we? Uh, how many did we send? Ah, oh, we just changed the lend these so we don't actually get to see what the number is. Never mind. I should have checked that just beforehand, shouldn't I? No legal transport with. Okay, so uh, Japan is... China's on its last legs. So, so as I said to you before, that's usually a sign that things aren't going too well in Asia. Um... Can we assign here? It's really tricky with this. You just can't assign it really easy. There you go. There you go. I guess I could uh, assign Malaysia's troops too. Yeah. Uh, here. Here. Losses in the English Channel. So this point, I feel like it might be because we don't have... Can we put them on patrol? Oh, I think the losses are due to naval bombers, maybe? Okay, that might be the case, I'm not sure. Good, good. Alright. So those are all up to date, that's fine. We have full control of the sea, so focusing on sea is a complete waste of time. Uh, those are up to date for the most part. We could focus on excavation, which I think is a good idea because we are importing a lot of stuff right now. So that's going to give us the biggest initial benefit. I think what we'll do is you guys are going to join this guy. Which I think we might make this a Field Marshal Richard. Yep. Resistance in Somaliland. Ah, oh, I don't care. There's a lot of troops based here. Okay, so ideally I'd like you guys to go back and repair... Basing them in the Scottish Highlands. So, I've realised there's a minor mistake that I've made here. I've assigned a lot of uh, older destroyers to this fleet, and I should have assigned all the newer ones. It's a minor hiccup. It's not a really big deal, but it is something to be aware of. We were repaired on the 2nd of November 1940. Okay, that's not too far away. Yet again, so many destroyers. Hungry joins the Axis. You guys, 27th of August. Okay, so that's massively increase the repair time. So that's one of the issues you've got to be aware of, particularly with the UK, because you have a big navy. I guess this is a problem for USA too, that if you are repairing your ships, you need to make sure that the naval bases are nice and fat. Okay, that's good. So that's good. Excavation is fine. I'm going to go for the construction, which is good. I'm going to go for some Churchills, make some divisions with them in. Bulgaria's joined the Axis. Trotsky has survived. Southern England. What you normally do at this point is you'd look for where the AI's got most of their troops as such and you try and engage them and fight them in them certain places. So... Because your production, for instance, as USA and the UK, is very good for planes, you have that minus 
Um, yeah, you have the minus 10% uh, cost reduction for fighters. You can, most cases, produce more than the Axis. So in that case, whenever you're fighting their planes in the air, even if you're taking a lot of losses, you are technically still winning because you're removing their total amount of planes they're going to have for fighting the Russians. So in this case, they've got 2,000. And we have um, almost 4,000, well, three and a half. And he's got almost three and a half as well. So that just gives you an idea that for the Barbarossa situation, the air war is definitely going to be in our favor. The Kingdom of Romania would like to join. Uh, sure, why not? There you go. That'll just be a bit of a nuisance in the side of the German axis then. That's not particularly historical, but why not? Um, Alright. So, what else could we go for? Air superiority is a good one. Screening is a good one. I think we'll go for the co war economy though. We could go for extensive conscription too, which is becoming more likely because we are taking a few losses. So we are shooting down bombers, but not that many, to be honest with you. You probably want to assign more. The problem is with the AI, when you assign more fighters into a region, the AI has a calculation based on how many fighters they've got to bomber ratio, and sometimes they'll just back out their bombers. So it kind of becomes pointless. It becomes this annoying cat and mouse game where you're constantly trying to pursue their planes. So I don't even want to play that game, so fuck it. Oh, I've got planes based here that I wasn't even aware of. Huh. Huh. China wants a non-aggression pact. China is on its last legs. I'm surprised I can't deliver through here. I don't understand. Hmm. Oh, what's this? What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So get rid of you, and everyone else goes here. You goes here. Perfect. And you gets assigned to here. Now the pink army here. Perfect. Oh, and this guy. Uh, I think I'm just better off assigning a general that's over uh, the 24 stack limit. Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Alright, we've almost catched up with guns, which is relatively easy with that 10% reduction cost. We really, really are pumping out planes at the moment, which is good. Keeping a nice excess of weapons, more volunteers. Have a, have a look at where lost our English channel again. English channel twice. So in that case, we probably want to assign you to the English channel again. So we're winning the air war. Look at the logistics, see how many planes we've got. We've got an extra 700 planes that we could assign. So in that case, we'll make a super stack. Problem is, is when you're assigning planes that are in your reserve, they tend to be older models because it replaces the new ones. So it replaces the old ones, the new ones. So when you reassign and make a new air wing, you tend to find yourself with an air wing with a lot of old planes. Let's just have a look when he arrives. So if you look, most of these are gladiators, which are crap. And then hurricanes aren't too bad. So in all fairness, it'd probably be better off if this wing was about 400 in size. So that way there's less gladiators and more hurricanes. So that way that the you're not taking stupid losses in that case, which will be hurting your manpower as well, which isn't isn't worthwhile. We'll split this and you guys can go here. So look, they were bombing here and now I've assigned planes here, they're backed out. Classic AI. Germany's going to the war with the USSR, so we're going to get our Berberosa. So we've got some pretty fat divisions now. And I think it might be a good idea to uh, plan another invasion. I think for the most part this should be more successful. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. The Indian Prince has donated some Spitefuls. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. As you can see now, I've got an insane... Oh, look at all the forts, too. So we'll go for the five. Why not? Nice. Japan has annexed China. Now, that is a bit of a concern, because that means that 
This area is less secure than it once was. So Malaysia and Dutch East Indies are on the Japanese radar. Battle of Britain, good. Eastern Sea, not affecting us. We were there because we had some ships probably defending. Norway still hanging in there though. And uh, carrier fleet, is that still being repaired? Yeah, it is. Might be a good idea to max that out. Everything's looking pretty smoothly now. Yep, I think for the most part that'll do for now. So the next episode is going to be the war with the USSR. It's going to be interesting. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to like and subscribe. Drop us a comment and don't forget to like the video. Have a good day. See you soon. Bye-bye.